As I crept towards my mom's lab door, my palms became clammy and beads of sweat formed on my brow. My hands clenched the door and I pushed it open inch by inch until the space was wide enough for me to slide into the lab. My eyes bulged and my jaw dropped when I saw it there. She was my baby sister in a large standing tube which was being filled with liquid. Mom! I screamed hysterically as I rushed towards my sister. What are you doing? Mom turns towards me with a weathered look on her face. What I should have done a long time ago. I want my daughter back, and this is the only way I know how. You are probably wondering how things could have escalated to this point. So I'll start at the beginning. But before I do, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Amanda. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our amazing channel. Tap that notification bell so you will know when new content is posted. Okay, back to my story. As hard as it may seem, I had a pretty amazing life before my encounter with mom in her lab. Mom and dad are both scientists. And after I was born, they decided to branch out on their own and work from home. My parents were always there when I needed them. And being an only child, I love the fact that I have my parents all to myself. Even though I got many things I wanted, mom and dad made sure that I was responsible and respectful to everyone. When mama announced that she was pregnant, I was 12 at the time. I was sort of sad to know that I had to share my parents but I was also excited to have someone to play with. After my mom's first ultrasound, we found out that she was having twin girls. Isn't that exciting? Two siblings to play with. I couldn't wait to meet them. That night at home, we celebrated. The next day, my parents and I began to prepare for the new members of our family. The months flew by, and as the days drew closer to birth, I was so excited that many nights I lay awake thinking about all the cool things I would teach my baby sisters. Finally, the day arrived when mom was rushed to the hospital. Dad and I waited in the waiting area nervously as the minutes turned to hours. After a few hours, a doctor came to the waiting area and asked to speak with my dad. Is everything okay, doc? Your wife and one of your daughters are resting comfortably. I squeezed my dad's hand, knowing that the doctor was about to share the bad news. The doctor sighed heavily. Some complications arose during birth, and your daughter has been rushed to the ICU. Is she going to be okay? We're doing everything that we can. In about 30 minutes, you'll be able to check in on your wife and daughter. The doctor walked away and Dad and I sat in the waiting room until it was time to see Mom and the baby. As the nurse escorted us to the room, I looked up. My dad seemed to have a blank expression on his face that slowly changed into one of joy. When we entered the room, my eyes lit up when I saw the teeny tiny baby cuddled in my mom's arms. Mom and Dad named her Faith, and my other sister, Hope. While mom and dad spoke, I was fascinated by her ten tiny fingers and her ten tiny toes. I guess it was at that moment I decided that as a big sister, it was my duty to protect my little sisters. I couldn't wait to meet Hope. That, however, never came to pass. The next two weeks were devastating. Hope never made it past the ICU, and only my parents were allowed to see her. Mom showed me a picture of Hope, and that night I remember bawling my eyes out and praying that she would be okay, but it wasn't meant to be. She passed away a few days later. When Mom and Faith were released, my parents organized a farewell service. From that day on, my family was not the same. The days following Hope's death was an adjustment for everyone. At 13, I understood that Mom needed to take care of the baby but I was also hurt that mom never found time to do anything with me anymore. It had been nine months since Faith had been home, and mom still acted like she was a newborn. Over the past few months, tensions grew between mom and dad, and they had been arguing a lot. 
It wasn't like them, and every time I asked Dad about it, he smiled and said everything was going to be okay, and that sometimes parents argue. The thing was, my parents never argued before, and I didn't think that things were going to get better. One afternoon, I found Dad sitting at the kitchen table with his fingers wrapped around a cup of coffee, gazing into the distance. Dad, is everything okay? Dad plastered a fake smile on his face and turned to me. Hey, Pumpkin, I'm fine. Just working on something in the new lab. I didn't believe Dad. The way my life has changed drastically over the past few months, I knew that things were about to get much worse before it became better. The much worse came later on in the week when Dad told me that he was moving out. He gave me a phone and told me to call him if I needed him. I hugged him tightly and begged him to stay. He said that he needed time away to figure things out. But he would come and visit Faith and I as often as he could. With Dad gone, Mom became obsessed with a secret project that she was working on in her lab. I was no longer allowed to enter the lab. Anything Mom wanted needed to be placed by the door. Without Dad, I stepped up to become Faith's other parent. Since days would pass without mom coming out of the lab, the only times mom did come out of the lab was to take blood samples from Faith, which I found to be very suspicious. What could mom be working on that she needed Faith's blood? After a few days of mom taking blood samples, I called dad and told him what was going on. He had not been able to visit us as often as he wanted because he had gotten a new contract. I thought that calling him would fix things, but I definitely made things worse. When Dad got to the house, he opened the lab door with his key and confronted Mom about what I told him. I held faith as I listened to what he was saying by the door of the lab. He told Mom that if she did not stop her madness and started treating us right, that he was going to file for custody of his kids. After that, Mom and Dad's arguments were harsh whispers and I couldn't make out what they were saying. I didn't want to leave mom, but I wanted dad to spend more time with us. I read somewhere that some women have postpartum depression after birth, and mom also lost a daughter, which made things worse for her. I didn't want mom to lose faith in me, but I also became afraid of what mom was doing to faith. That night, dad spent the night, but he left early the next morning. The next two weeks, things seemed to be looking up. Mom and I actually started talking again and things seemed to be turning around for the better. But boy, I was wrong. I woke up one morning to an extremely quiet house. After looking throughout the house, I realized that both Mom and Faith were in the lab. I turned the knob on the door of the lab, and my heart stopped when I realized it was locked. What could a 13-year-old do? If I called Dad, he would take away Faith and I. If I called the police they would take away mom. If we stayed, I'm not sure what kind of experiments mom would continue on faith. I was confused and overwhelmed, so I did absolutely nothing and hoped that mom and faith would come out of the lab soon. Over the next few days, I hardly saw mom or faith. I felt as though something was slowly crushing my breath. I had never felt so alone in my life. I weighed my options once more and realized that I needed to help Faith. I remembered my promise to my sisters to protect them no matter what. Even if it was from Mom, I needed to get into the lab, so I had to wait for Mom. The next few hours, I lurked around the lab door like a fat kid lurking around desserts. Finally, I heard the lab door open. I pressed against the wall of the hiding spot as Mom peeked out of the lab before she scurried to the kitchen. I bolted towards the lab door and placed a rubber doorstep at the bottom of the door. Just as I was about to enter, I heard Mom coming back, and I dove into my hiding place and waited. As soon as Mom entered the lab, I knew I needed to move swiftly. It was now or never. As I crept toward Mom's lab door, My palms became clammy and beads of sweat formed on my forehead. My hands clenched the door handle as I pushed open the door inch by inch until I was able to slide into the lab. My eyes bulged and my jaw dropped when I saw it. 
there was my baby sister in a large standing, being filled with liquid. Mom! I screamed hysterically as I rushed toward my sister. What are you doing? Mom turned to me with a weathered look on her face. What I should have done a long time ago. I want my daughter back, and this is the only way I know how. If you don't stop, I'm going to call Dad. I yelled as I backed up towards the door. Before I knew what was happening, Mom attacked me and was trying to tie me to her metal lab table with one of her plastic tubes. As I looked at Faith in the tube, I knew it wouldn't be long before the two were completely filled. I had to think quickly. I looked towards the door and yelled at Dad. That was all it took for Mom to be distracted. I used those two seconds to kick hard at Mom's face. She stumbled backwards and fell against a cabinet against the wall. I scrambled to my feet and ran towards the machine. I slammed my hands on every button until the tubes opened. No! Mom screeched behind me. I grabbed Faith as Mom slid in who was trying to get to us. I was barely able to make it out of the lab. I grabbed my phone on the kitchen counter and bolted out the kitchen door. After a few minutes of running, I found a group of abandoned houses and called Dad. I told him what happened. He told me to stay where I was and that he was on his way. I had never been so scared in my life. When Dad found us, I was still shaking, and I threw my arms around his neck and cried. That night, we spent it at Dad's, but I wasn't able to sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Mom's face contorted in anger as she launched herself at me. I thought that maybe if I drank some warm milk, I would be able to sleep. That decision changed my life forever. As I was about to turn on the light, I noticed Dad was walking out of his lab. Why was Dad up so late? I wondered. I snuck into the lab to see what Dad was working on, and what my eyes gazed upon shook me to my very core. As I surveyed the lab, my eyes grew wide as I couldn't believe what I saw. There were many versions of faith in tubes, as well as many versions of myself. I walked closer and noticed that the tuple versions were deformed. I glimpsed a file on the desk and searched through the file in my dad's handwriting. His notes read, Subjects 124 and 165 are safe at my home. I continued reading through the file. On the day that my mom and Faith were discharged from the hospital, our family got into a car accident. A drunk driver ran the red light, and Faith and I were killed. All this time, the testing secrecy. Both mom and dad were working on it together. Amanda? Dad's voice came from behind me. How could I face him? Was I just a test subject to him? Did he even see me as his daughter? I felt his arm squeeze my shoulders gently as tears streamed down my face. You weren't supposed to see that. He turned me around to face him and hugged me tightly. Next, he walked us to the kitchen where he sat facing me as he tried to explain what I just saw. Dad said, After losing faith, they couldn't bear to lose their other children as well. He continued by saying, He continued by saying they were successfully able to clone me in faith. However, they were never able to successfully clone hope. Dad said he tried to get Mom to stop, but she refused to give up on hope. But how do I still have memories? And why aren't there any crashes? Well, your mom and I didn't want you to have memories of the crash, so we removed those and added memories to Hope's funeral. Those were the only memories that were altered. So what now? Well, now you go to bed and figure out the rest tomorrow. As I sat in bed, I couldn't wrap my head around everything. Dad just confessed to me. Now that I know he is going to wipe my memories of me finding out, should I run away or should I hope for the best? What would you do if you found out you were a clone? Leave your answers in the comments. I could hardly contain my excitement as I waited outside the school for my mom to pick me up. My friends were all excited for me too. I can't believe you're finally going to see your mom. 
I know, she's only been away a year, but it seems like forever. I know, right? I'm so happy. I really missed her. Yeah, I know you've spoken to her every day, but it's not the same as having your mom there, is it? I can't imagine how I'd feel if my mom had to go away for a year. Anyway, she's back now in a few minutes. You'll get to see her. I looked down the road trying to see if I could see her car coming. My stomach had butterflies. And my heart was beating like mad. Come on, Mom, hurry up. Suddenly, this random woman walked up to me, put her arms around me, and gave me a big hug. Hello, darling. Uh, who are you? What do you mean? Who am I? I'm your mom. My mouth fell open in shock. It was definitely my mom's voice. I would recognize that anywhere. But this woman looked nothing like my mom. I could hear my friends snickering and whispering to each other. God, she looks crazy. Have you seen how much plastic surgery she's had? I know, she looks so fake. Why would she do that to herself? She looks so weird. My friends were right. My mom was unrecognizable. I was so embarrassed. I couldn't believe that she would have had all this work done to herself. But before I go on, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't end up with a psycho mom like mine. I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. So I pushed my mom into the car and jumped in beside her. I tried to block out the sounds of my friends and everyone else laughing, but it was impossible. As soon as we pulled away from the school gates, I started laying into my mom. What have you done to yourself? What do you mean? Are you serious? You've completely changed your appearance. I didn't even know you were my mom. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Marcia. Sure, I've had a bit of work done but I'm only trying to maintain my looks. You've got to be joking. Have you looked in the mirror? You're over-exaggerating. No, I'm not. All my friends could tell what you've done. Oh, God, it's so embarrassing. I just don't understand why you would want to do it. Because I want to look young. No one wants to look old and wrinkly, do they? But you've gone too far. Sure, an odd facial here and there and some good face cream, that's normal. But what you've done is far from normal. Well, I think I look good. We drove the rest of the way home in complete silence. So much for the happy reunion I was looking forward to. As soon as we got home, I ran into the house pushing past my dad on the way and stormed up to my room. Marcia, what's the matter? What's going on? I tried to ignore my dad, but he wouldn't let it go. Come on, Marcia. Come back down and talk about whatever it is that's bothering you. I went back down the stairs and told my dad what I was angry about. It's her. Who? Mom. Why? What's wrong with mom? Have you two had a fight? Just look at her. Don't tell me you haven't noticed what she's done to herself. I think she looks great. You're kidding me, aren't you? It's like she went abroad and came back a different person. No, I'm serious. I don't think your mom has ever looked better. I couldn't believe that my dad was happy with the way she looked. You're probably just happy because she's got big boobs. Now, after those final words, I stormed back up to my room, slamming the door behind me. I laid on my bed and started ranting to myself. I was so mad with my mom. I started shaking with anger. How am I going to face anyone at school? I'm going to be the laughingstock. Oh, God, my life couldn't be any worse right now. The first day back at school was awful. Every time I walked into a room, everybody suddenly stopped talking and just stared at me. I knew they were whispering about my mom. 
Of course, my friends didn't say anything. They tried to reassure me. But I knew they were lying. She doesn't look that bad, Marcia. You know, everyone will soon get used to it and find something else to gossip about. But I knew the only way to get them to stop talking and laughing about my mom was to keep her out of sight. So from that moment on, I made sure never to let my friends see me with my mom. I could tell that she was a bit upset not spending time with me, but it was her own fault. I told her I didn't want her picking me up from school anymore. But why not, Marcia? We have so much time to make up for. I like walking home with my friends. Oh, okay, then if you're sure. I am. Whenever she asked me to go out to dinner with her or to the shops, I always came up with some excuse or another. Oh, sorry, I've got plans. Or I have so much homework to catch up on. You and Dad just go. And my friends were right after a while. People did stop talking about my mom and found other stuff to gossip about. My life went back to normal, and I tried to forget about what my mom had done to herself. But then one night, things blew up again. We were sitting having dinner together when Mom started about doing some more surgery. I'm thinking about getting a rib removed. It will make me way smaller. I shook my head when I heard what she said. You can't do that. That's crazy. No, it isn't. All the celebrities get it done. And look how good they look. You are insane. I was so angry. I jumped up, knocking my chair to the floor, and at the same time, spilling a glass of water all over the table. That's enough. Now you're going too far. I'm not going to let you do this to yourself. What do you mean? You're not going to let me? I can do whatever I want. You can't do this. It's the most stupid idea I've ever heard. Marcia, I am having the surgery done, whether you like it or not. You make me so mad. I can't talk to you about this anymore. I stormed out of the room and upstairs to my bedroom. As I lay on my bed, I couldn't stop thinking about what my mom was planning to do. I have to find a way to get her to stop doing all these crazy things to herself. Suddenly, it was like a light bulb had gone off in my head. I knew what I had to do. I decided I would devise a plan to trick my mom into not doing any more crazy surgeries or injecting anything into herself. I started searching through the internet and finally found what I was looking for. It was an advert for a company that hired out actors for any role you wanted them to perform. I contacted them and organized for someone to play a fake doctor. Then I found an office space to hire for a day. Once it was all set up, I told my mom all about it. Mom, you know what? I owe you an apology. I apologize for trying to stop you from getting the surgery. I thought about it and you're right. It's your body and you can do what you want with it. I am so happy to hear you say that, Marcia. I don't like fighting with you all the time. Well, we're not going to fight anymore. In fact, I've even done some research and I found the best doctor to perform your surgery. Wow, that's great. Thank you, darling. And that's not all. I've set up an appointment with him and I'm going to come with you for it. Oh, darling, you made me so happy. My mom came over and gave me a hug. I'm happy you're going to come with me. When the morning of my mom's appointment arrived, we set off in her car for a short drive into town. His office was on the corner opposite the post office. Okay, we can park right outside. Then, as we pulled up, I saw that the company had put up a golden sign on the wall outside the building. Dr. Brown Specialist in All Plastic Surgeries. This is the place right here. We knocked on the door, and when it opened, a man was standing there wearing a white coat. Hello? Hello. You must be Marcia. And this is your mom. Yes, it is. 
Well, come on in then. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I want to get a rib removed to make my waist look smaller. Well, yes, of course. I can help you with that. But have you heard about the latest discovery in the field of plastic surgery? No, no, I haven't. What is it? The doctor told my mom all about this amazing new serum that would make you look 20 years younger than you were. That sounds like just what I need. Where can I get it? Oh, I can order it for you. But you will need to pay the cost up front, and it is very expensive. Oh, don't worry about the price. I will pay anything if it makes me look younger. Mom handed over a huge bunch of dollar bills, and the doctor told her to come back the same day the following week to have the treatment. When we left his office, Mom was so happy. I can't believe you've done this for me, Marcia. I can't wait for the next week to get the treatment. You're welcome, Mom. I just want you to be happy. The following week, when Mom went in for the treatment, she was so excited. How long will it take for me to see the results of the serum? Oh, it shouldn't take long. You'll probably wake up in the morning and not even recognize yourself in the mirror. Wow, that's quick. I can't wait to see the results. But what my mom saw when she looked in the mirror the next morning did not make her happy at all. The sound of my mom screaming woke me up from a deep sleep. Uh-huh. Ah, what's happened to my face? I jumped out of bed and ran towards the bathroom. What I saw when I got there made me gasp with shock. Mom, what happened? You look terrible. It must have been that serum. Oh my God, I'm going to kill that doctor. My mom's face and body was one big red rash and she had huge hives breaking out everywhere. I can't go out looking like this. What will people think of me? Maybe it'll calm down in a little while. Don't panic. I'm sure it's going to be fine. But it wasn't fine, and it didn't calm down. If anything, it started getting worse. I'm swelling up now, right? That's it. I'm going straight to the doctor's office, and I'm going to make him do something about it. Okay, Mom, I'll come with you. Thank you, Marcia. You're such a good girl. Mom and I drove straight to the doctor's office, but you wouldn't believe what we found when we got there. The whole place was empty. The sign had been taken off the building, and the doctor was nowhere to be seen. My mom gave a sigh of despair. Oh, Marcia, I've got a feeling we've been scammed. I think you might be right, Mom. I can't believe I fell for it. I mean, sure, I've heard all the horror stories of bad plastic surgeons, but I never thought it would happen to me. It's not your fault, Mom. He seems so genuine. While I've learned my lesson, as far as I'm concerned, all plastic surgeons are scammers. I'm not going to do anything else to my face or body. I think you've made the right decision, Mom. You don't want something like this happening to you again. I was so happy. Finally, my mom had come to her senses. She wasn't going to have any more crazy procedures done to herself. And I bet you're wondering what caused my mom's face and body to react so badly to the serum. Well, the serum was actually harmless. All it was was some coconut oil. The reason she had all the rashes and hives, it was because I had been secretly sprinkling selfish and seafood into all of her food while she wasn't looking. You see, my mom has a severe allergy to shellfish. I knew that if I gave her enough of it in the days leading up to her appointment, she would be sure to break out in a rash. I'm so happy. My plan worked. 
At least now, I won't have to be embarrassed by anything else my mom might do to herself.